it is now recording. Okay, so hello everyone. Good afternoon and welcome to the um, NCLA, North Carolina Library Association Distance Learning Section Webinar Wednesday session. Um, do they have to like you? Facebook marketing in the age of paid ads. My name is Samantha Harlow and I'm the online learning librarian at UNC Greensboro. And I'm also the co-chair of the distance learning section. Um, without further ado, I'm going to introduce today's speakers. It's Elizabeth Marcus and Jill Ellerin from, U under, from as the undergraduate experience librarian and the systems librarian at Western Carolina University. So you guys can begin now. Hi, thank you so much and welcome to our webinar. Um, do they have to like you? Facebook marketing in the age of paid ads. So before we get started, we want to thank the um, NCLA distance learning section for allowing us to be part of this webinar series. Um, we actually presented a poster on this topic um, at the NCLA conference in October. And um, we had so much information that we wanted to share. That it was really hard to get it all into a poster. So we're really glad that they let us be, be part of this webinar series. Um, so Samantha said, I am um, Elizabeth Marcus. I'm the undergraduate experience librarian at Hunter Library. I'm also chair of the library's marketing committee, which is how I became involved um, with uh, Facebook marketing for the library. And my name is Jill Ellern. I'm the systems librarian here at Western, and I get involved because uh, uh, I was one of the posters and and on as a uh, adjunct person on the marketing committee. That's bad. We have, I think when I was that yesterday, I was watching. We have quite a few things that we want to talk about today, so I'll kind of give you an overview of um, some of the items that we're going to discuss. Ooh, it's not so we're going to. Um, kind of explain our interests in this topic. Um, so Jill and I kind of discussed this when we were both administrators um, for the library's yeah. Facebook page um, as a potential research topic. Sure. And um, we actually <laughs> had, um, we'd actually um, kind of talked about, you know, even though Facebook is not a hot topic in libraries anymore, um, it's still important in mar as a marketing tool for libraries. Um, so we'll discuss that. We'll talk about um, our interest in, in what other North Carolina libraries were doing. And um, we're also going to uh, kind of review some of the data that we collected about um, Facebook pages of libraries in North Carolina. Um, we're going to navigate um, or kind of talk about some of the changes that's happened with Facebook since 2004 when it first began and, and how that has affected um, Facebook marketing for us. We'll talk about um, some of the or what organic reach is and how that has affected um, marketing over time, particularly the decline of organic reach. And we're going to share some tips on how to improve um, your page or personal Facebook page as far as the library goes and posts and engage in some um, as far as outreach through uh, Facebook, the network in general. And last but not least, the question that we all have, um, how do we find the time for Facebook marketing and how do we stay up to date on, on all the changes that are going on with Facebook? So we'll talk about that at the very end. I'm seeing some technical issues with um, my Prezi, so I'm gonna um, uh, reload this a minute because things aren't zooming in the way they're supposed to zoom in. So why were we interested in this topic? Well, Elizabeth and I were talking, uh, we're, uh, we have our offices next to each other, and we uh, wanted to do some research together. And one of the type items that I knew we had in common was uh, we're both fa big Facebook users. And so the idea of actually doing something in Facebook sounded like a great idea. And um, I'm more in a data collection than she does reference stuff. So uh, we just thought it would be cool to do some research on Facebook. And so as we began thinking about what things were possible to do on Facebook, all of these things came to our mind. Well, is it a waste of time? Can we improve our likes? And so we started thinking about all the things that Facebook has been talking about in the literature. And now the page is not coming forward here. So what can we do? What's been done before? Is it worth the time that we are spending on it? Um, 
why is our fan uh, engagement so low? Is there things that we could maybe try and check the, what happened to it and write about that perhaps? What can we do to improve what we have? Is it because we haven't spent enough time at it? All these things were kind of going through our minds and we're trying to figure out what to do. And it occurred to us that what we really didn't know is what other libraries were doing. Let's look at what libraries are doing in, in, around. And as we began looking at the literature, um, I had already done some research in this field of looking at what libraries are doing, and I had just published quite an a exhaustive study about authentication in the public area. So I had a database of those North Carolina libraries and thought it would be a good idea to, to pull out this stuff that had to do with authentication and pull in um, what I had on Facebook on it. And so we started looking at what was going on and adding some more basic demographics. And what we quickly found was that there was not a lot of stuff about web-based information about what was there in just North Carolina. And so we had to work on creating that database and, and populating it. And we uh, created our own North Carolina Academic Library directory in which we did some searching around from the basic demographics, it's not coming in, and we scanned the pages that were in ALA um, with North Carolina and tried to get that data in. And we looked at Google and uh, did pages about what was happening. And it's just not gonna work as well as I hoped. Um, and so here were the basic ideas we kind of started with. What North Carolina libraries had Facebook pages, how many likes and follows, and we found, have you been theirs uh, that were being recorded on their Facebook pages? And well, more importantly, could we predict the number of likes we said, we saw based on their demographic factors that we, we looked at? And so we started creating this database. And um, the system is not working as well as I hope. So we collected these demographics. I added iPads, I created where the links were located on those pages, but we still were not sure what we really wanted to do yet, Why? what kind of research we were looking for. But as we began uh, creating our database, we found these basic things, is that in North Carolina, in the academic libraries, 62, actually 63 if you count the one or two librarians that create their, their own Facebook pages, uh, as we searched, have a Facebook page. And those are, of course, many of the big ones. The ones that didn't were more often uh, small community colleges or private colleges, although the smaller they were, they tended to have a Facebook page and not than not. Um, and this changed over time. We gained one, and we lost three over that study period where people's uh, Facebook pages were removed. And so we collected likes. We collected likes for uh, in four different areas. So there we are. So we collected likes. Um, we just started in March in 2016. We then ooh, began searching. Man, it's now it's too responsive. We, we collected them. Uh, in March, and then a little more than a year later, we did it again. And then when we had our poster session uh, accepted, we uh, uh, did it again. So we had four different uh, likes. And as we began to look at the likes, we noticed that the Facebook pages themselves changed. At first, it seemed like people were using fan pages for their business, and then it was more like group pages. And then, uh, Facebook for Business started uh, giving you an option of one of six different types, and we saw different libraries picking different types. And lastly, as we uh, finish this, is, and it's still evolving, but the Facebook for Business really has taken hold, and that's what we're seeing. Okay, so now we're going to talk line for um, changes across Facebook in general. Um, so in 2012, um, we had Facebook basically um, allowed the public to purchase stock. 
And so this changed a lot of the dynamics for Facebook um, of being geared more towards business. Um, they also began their ads in 2012. So this is when organic reach or um, posts, uh, as far as business posts and ads started showing up more frequently in news, um, news feeds. And then folks, as far as their family and friends, those posts started showing up less frequently. So there was, there was a decline in organic reach um, for a lot of organizations. Um, so, and also, um, Facebook gave individuals lots of different ways that they could um, share information, that they could um, uh, react to information. You see the reactions um, showed up in 2016, and Facebook Live um, was really a huge um, addition in 2016, right before the election. Um, and videos, um, Facebook made it to where videos, and especially live videos, are boosted to the very top of the news feed um, uh, in the algorithm for Facebook. Um, so this really changed the dynamic of Facebook over time and, and they were having to um, kind of balance the interests of do they want to be the social network that they were um, originally um, when they were created in 2004 and also they had to balance um, the interests of businesses. Um, so over time you can see that they've kind of um, changed the news feed algorithm priorities um, and currently, actually in January, they just started making it to where your newsfeed priority is primarily for individuals, for family, friends, and local news. Um, so this is constantly changing and we're having to keep up with that um, as we uh, market for libraries using Facebook. So it's, it's an ongoing, um, ongoing thing, all, ongoing changes. So um, because of this and because of overall, um, there are actually over 2 billion users um, monthly of Facebook, um, the organic reach has plummeted over time. So at this point, um, only about two to three percent of your audience will actually see the posts um, or items that you post. So for us, we have about a thousand users, so that would be uh, our thousand fans, so that would be about 20 to 30 people that would actually see our posts out of all of the folks that actually like us. So that's a little bit discouraging <laughs> for um, for people who want to market through Facebook um, at no cost. And um, this will incre increasingly be a problem as organic reach um, decreases. So the official definition of organic reach, according to Facebook, is how many people that you can reach for free on Facebook by posting to your page. So obviously this is really important to us um, for libraries that you know maybe not have, they don't have a very large marketing budget or no budget at all. Um, so, um, because of the changes that have happened in the algorithm and um, what's happened with, you know, the number of users and the number of posts overall, that's why that the organic reach has, has decreased over time um, and affected the newsfeed algorithm. So, what happened as we looked at our data? So, um, I'm going to show you a, a little bit about that data. I've uh, created a link here. It's on the pages. Um, hopefully, this will link correctly. Can you see that? I'm hoping you can see that. We're sharing our page. Um, I've posted this on my uh, uh, Google Drive page, but I've also put it up on the Dataverse and the links that are there so you can look at your own um, uh, libraries for those North Carolina folks. As you look, uh, I've, I've gotten various uh, uh, screens here. The first one I want to talk about is likes. I've sorted this by the number of total likes over a course of the two, almost two years that we've done this study. And you'll see, uh, not surprisingly, the highest likes are often the biggest libraries of the top 10. Uh, it's no surprise that NC State and, and that type of thing are, are here. But what is very interesting is that some, all, some of the smaller schools, um, uh, like Western Carolina University or Asheville, which are, are eight and, and below in the just number of uh, students are actually getting a lot more likes than uh, others. And this is a list of the 61 of, of those libraries. And you can look at the four intervals in which we've done it. And when you look at this uh, by weighted, it clearly, this doesn't tell us much. This is not surprising, but when you look at it by a percentage increase, and that's what this next screen is. 
the number of libraries changes, it's clearly that, that, that these libraries are doing something that increase their likes that is totally different from just strict numbers. They're doing something that increased. The University of Mount Olive, for instance, has gotten a 70% increase in the number of, of likes they've had over this, our study period. And some of these mid-level ones have increased their likes as well. Um, what did they do to make this happen? That was one of the questions we had early on. And so we started looking at some other information, like where their links were, and you can check this data, uh, where their library, uh, uh, library's homepage is, whether that uh, Facebook link is on the homepage or on the college page. We have a lot of data on this. We haven't crunched all of it, but where the library is itself, does that have a relationship on how many links it has? And so what I thought maybe is there something else is going on, perhaps that's the type of post they have or the number of times they posted. And so I started looking at seeing if I could just by brute force copy those links, the last five, and say what they had, what, what information do they have going on here? Um, is it the reaction? Is it what's going on? Until I finally, uh, this brute force uh, method was just too much. And so I found a piece of software that I would recommend you look at. It's called Lycalizer. And um, in October, before we did our uh, poster session, I ran all of our libraries that we were tracking through Lycalizer. And it allows you to see the number, the percentage of text posts they have, photo posts, and videos. It gives you an idea of the posts per day and the length of posts and that type of thing. And I've sorted this by the number of interactions. That's how many people actually interacted with the page. And you can see that this is, again, a totally different one. What is uh, uh, Belmont Abbey College doing that they had 63 um, uh, interactions? And when you look at this, you'll notice that many of them are videos. Um, they actually have videos attached. So we can get a little better idea. And then I did it again uh, just before this presentation. And Lycalizer now only does seven days. And we have another one, Chapel Hill, for instance, which had an increase in likes of only 3% over this time period, um, has had 69 interactions over the last seven days. And so you get an idea of what they're doing and get, gives you some more ideas of the, um, uh, what is working and what might be working. And we had a little bit of, um, folks as we did our poster session that had campaigns linked to other pages, that kind of thing, which, which uh, Elizabeth was going to talk a little bit more about today. So that's the data and you can look at it at your leisure. Okay, so since there wasn't any really clear indicator of um, how likes, you know, a, a likes affected the success of a particular page, we decided to focus on engagement instead and what you could do to improve your current page and to improve your engagement with your uh, fans. So we kind of took, took a look at, it, at the literature and as far as literature of uh, Facebook marketing for libraries, most of it had uh, around 2014. Um, so a lot of, a lot of the information wasn't available now. As I mentioned earlier, it's not really considered a hot topic anymore in libraries. Um, so we decided to take a different approach and look at um, general marketing information um, for uh, marketing, you know, for nonprofits, for businesses um, through Facebook. And we found some really um, interesting tips. So um, ways to improve your current page, um, you may consider regularly reviewing and updating your account profile information. So if you're just creating a page, um, some things you probably want to add is um, the library hours, make sure that they're thorough, current, um, check every few months to see if the, you need to make any updates. Um, you can also add um, inf contact information, make sure you include phone number, um, website, any other options they give you for contact information, fill those fields in. Um, you can add information about other social media pages that you have, links to your Twitter and Instagram pages. Um, and 
Last but not least, there's actually a way that you can uh, select categories uh, that you want your page to be included in. So some of the main categories um, that we have selected, um, one of them is library, which of course makes, sure, makes perfect sense. Um, since we're a library, we want to people to be e easily find other libraries. Um, another category that you might consider including your page in is universities, um, colleges and universities. Um, and third, um, there's also a general category for education. So you can um, include those, those categories, and I believe these categories basically function like hashtags. So whenever um, someone is interested in a particular, maybe a particular hobby, a particular subject, um, whenever they're, when Facebook will suggest certain pages to them, it's more likely if you include these categories that um, they will be, um, be included in their suggested pages to like. Um, so this is kind of one way to get a little bit more visibility um, so make sure that you, when you're creating a profile or updating, look to see what categories you can add and include your page um, in. Another way that you can improve your current page is to use the schedule post feature under publishing tools. And if you go to your administrator page, it's at the very top um, next to insights. So you can actually schedule posts out um, weeks at a time. So this is um, kind of a picture, a screenshot to share some of the posts that I have um, scheduled ahead lately. Um, so it took probably less than 30 minutes to schedule all of these posts and to gather the links, the uh, images and everything that I needed. Um, and the great thing about scheduling ahead of time is you can schedule a post to appear after hours. So you'll see a couple of the posts that we have were scheduled for 5.30 after most of, us, most of us have left left the building. And this is really great for, you know, catching folks after work um, or students, you know, after classes. So you can be kind of strategic in how you schedule these posts and it saves you a lot of time in the long run. During the course of our uh, uh, looking at it and looking more in depth about uh, Facebook for Business, the uh, Availability and the data that's available with Facebook Insights, we can't stress it enough that you can look at about what use your library's Facebook page is having. And we wanted to show you a few because most people probably don't, don't uh, um, look at this very much. There's an overall performance, which gives you a quick snapshot of how your page is doing. It's uh, right under the Insights and then the overview. It gives you an image of uh, various uh, uh, pictures to give you a quick snapshot of that. The next is the organic, the reach, including organic reach, and you'll see, because we don't pay for it, you'll see that the paid reach will be a different color, but you can get a good indication of how good your organic reach is doing for each of the, the time period and for uh, pages that you might post. More importantly here is that when are your followers looking at your page? I call this the whale. This image is pretty much the same regardless of the pages I've looked at. And that says that somewhere before nine o'clock, your users are reading Facebook. And because posts degrade over time, the newest ones show first in the um, news algorithm, it behooves you to uh, schedule those ones in this nice period before nine o'clock when they see it. When your post is new, your organic reach will um, be further if you uh, schedule those appointments. The next is just looking at who's engaged. If you ever do pay for it, uh, an ad, it's good to know who your target audience is and who's reading you. Sometimes you wonder who's actually reading your posts and this will give you a good indication of who they are and some basic demographics, which is kind of heartening as you're, you're thinking no one's listening to. And then um, which posts are working and it gives you an idea of the page reviews. And if you post videos, it'll tell you how much it gets used and how many times it gets read, that kind of thing. So that is very helpful to see and uh, um, gives you feedback on whether you're doing things well. Okay, so um, in looking at this, the literature, we also found some general guidelines for Facebook posts, and um, we've tried to use some of these over time, some of these general guidelines. Um, so probably the most important thing that you want to consider when you are looking at 
um, or planning to post on Facebook is to create authentic snackable content. And we put snackable in bold um, because that is, that is the key. So snackable basically constitute a post that is short, so not a lot of text, that includes lots of um, visual interaction. So it could be a picture, it could be a short video, but it needs to be something that folks can consume in just a few seconds. And um, you don't have to be very formal about it. Um, this is kind of something that we struggled with over time and trying to figure out um, the types of posts that we wanted to have. And in the beginning, or we have a lot of, uh, quite a few administrators in the library here that share uh, administrative duties. And a lot of people tried different types of posts and there were some that were, were a little more fun, you know, um, quotes and things like that. And we got the most likes for those types of posts. So, um, so you know, have a little bit of fun. You don't have to be so formal um, in your posts. Be authentic. Um, so you can, you know, ask folks, you know, if something didn't work as far as a, um, you know, an event, ask folks for feedback on that. And most people are more than happy to share their opinion. So um, it's just important to be authentic. Um, as I mentioned before, you know, ask open-ended questions and encourage um, feedback. And you can do that um, in asking for suggestions about particular events or um, services. Um, whenever we looked at the um, kind of the suggestions for how to put how often to post and when to post the suggestions were kind of all over the board so these are just some general guidelines that we um, were able to come up with it seems ideal to post no more than two times a day and no less than once a week um, so if you uh, post less than once a week people will think that your page is um, inactive um, and if you post more than two times a day there's something called um, time decay so that if you post um, maybe two posts within two hours, the first post will actually get pushed way further down the newsfeed um, because Facebook is kind of, you know, thinking that if you're posting too often, you may be a spammer. Um, so that's something you want to consider. We suggest po um, maybe scheduling posts every one, one time a day or every other day. That's about probably about the middle of the road and, and, and some good gu guidelines to follow. And of course, um, present, as I mentioned earlier, present content with photos, videos, polls. Um, students especially are used to this kind of visual content because of uh, being on Instagram and Snapchat. Um, so make sure that you engage them with a lot of visuals. Okay, so um, in addition to doing maintenance on your own page and um, curating the um, correct kind of post that will uh, produce the most engagement, you kind of want to increase your vis visibility and interaction on Facebook as a whole. So do a little more outreach is important. Um, instead of just sitting there and wait, waiting for people to interact with you, go out and interact with them. So the first thing that you can do is kind of listen to what other people are saying. And um, ways that you can do that is to do uh, Facebook searching. So the main search box on Facebook at the top where you go to search for a particular page or a person, and you can just do general keyword searches there. So if you're curious about what others are saying uh, about the library, maybe students wanna see what they're posting um, while they're studying in the library, you can find that information by just doing a general Facebook search, either by you know, location, keyword. Um, and another way that you can get information is to um, set up a Google alert. So if you have a Google account, you have the option to um, set up a keyword alert. So say we wanted to see what folks were saying about the university in general, um, about their classes, you might um, do a Google alert for Western Carolina University. And any time that the university comes up in the news or through a page in Google, um, you'll get a notification. Uh, and you can customize that this to whatever you want. Um, um, so if you're, you know, interested in what students are looking at, uh, maybe a particular event that's coming up that you want to engage in conversation with others about, um, do a Google Alerts um, set up for that particular term. And something else that you can do to engage with others is to like other pages as your library. So the traditional like button with the thumbs up, um, if you select that button, um, it will like the page as your own personal profile. So what you want to do is like, um, you'll see in the drop down box, there's an option to like as your page. So if you do this, you'll get a lot more visibility for other folks, from other folks and they find out, hey, you know, Hunter Library actually has a Facebook page. And um, 
for alumni in particular, we have, um, this is just kind of an example, we get a lot of questions for them asking about um, privileges to the library, you know, can they still check out books, can they access databases? So by liking their page and then them seeing that you're interacting with their page, um, no, lets them know that you're interested in serving them, you know, in interacting with them, asking, answering any questions that they have. Um, so it's a really great way to get, increase your visibility. And uh, another way that you can interact um, with other pages is to comment on the pages. You can see in the picture that um, I kind of show you there's a drop down box where you have the option to comment as an organization page. Um, so I, we do this occasionally. Um, this, I chose this particular post because um, the library is actually located next to Cullowee Baptist Church. Um, so we have an opportunity here to um, kind of share some information about our digital collections. Um, because, and we have a great number of special collections about the university history. And um, so find, look for those opportunities to promote your services um, and to solve problems for uh, folks. So for a student, you may see in, uh, you know, in a group page that they're having trouble getting a particular book, a textbook, the, the bookstore has run out. So, um, you know, you could post and say, hey, the library has this book or we have it on reserve, you know, for the class to use um, until the bookstore gets more copies. So try to think about some different ways that you can solve problems for folks and kind of help them out and they're more likely to come to your page and see what's going on. Um, last but not least, um, you can definitely collaborate with established pages at your institution or in your community. So we do this a lot with the general um, social media office at WCU. And we'll ask them to share a particular post, share events that we have going on. Um, because they have obviously many more people that follow their page. Um, so we have about probably a thousand followers and they have uh, over 50,000. So it's, it's a really great way to increase your audience um, and get a lot more people um, eyes, a lot more people's eyes on your content. And um, you might tr also try um, any student pages that, that maybe residential living has created. We have um, a number of class of pages where each year, whenever new students come in, a residential living will ask students to uh, join that group in order to be informed about um, events going on on campus. So definitely get involved with anything, any groups like that, um, that can um, give you more intimate access with the students. Um, and last of all, you definitely want to try to set up a meeting just with your social media ma manager, either um, in your community or on your campus. Um, they have invaluable information on how you can increase um, increase your engagement um, through Facebook marketing. So we met with our manager just a few weeks ago and she had some great information on how we could do better with our Facebook uh, marketing. She had actually previously worked with a nonprofit organization so she understood the challenges of um, not having a budget at all <laughs> and trying to deal with organic reach. Um, so definitely talk to those folks. They have a lot of great insight. And they have money. Yes. <laughs> she had money to spend on Facebook. Okay, so um, strategies for increasing your local reach. Um, these are just some kind of specific things that you can do to try to com combat um, the decrease in organic reach over time. So most of the literature um, suggested forming a network of library ambassadors on Facebook. Um, some people um, talk about having like a um, advocacy group a and you can form this group through a number of different um, individual groups. So you may have uh, loyal patrons, either students, faculty or staff um, that might be willing to, if you um, ask them, might be willing to share some of your posts, some of the information of the, about their favorite um, services in the library. You can also recruit um, folks from your friends group. So if you have um, community members that, that are really involved in programming for the library that might be, they might be willing to share that information through their Facebook page. And this kind of bypasses the issue we have with organic reach because they'll be sharing with their family and friends um, and they're more likely with the current algorithm set up to get that information out there. Whereas we may have more trouble as an organization page in doing that. Um, you can also uh, cross post across multiple social media platforms. So for us, um, Twitter, we have more uh, faculty and staff followers through Twitter probably than Facebook. Um, so if you cross post there, you can kind of get all of the different um, patron groups that you need to reach 
So, and our Instagram, we also have an Instagram page that is involved with our uh, general orientation of the library when students get here in their first year. So if we wanted to um, get information out to students specifically, we definitely cross post to our Instagram page. Um, you can also create a Facebook group connected to your page. You might be able to, some of the ambassadors um, could be directly connected to that group. And um, you could, if, as a, an incentive, in order to get folks into your group, you might give them some perks as far as, um, you know, previews of a, you know, a book sale, um, different things like that. Um, kind of to let, let them know about things going on before you send the information out to the general, um, the general population. Um, link your Facebook page to your website. We were incredibly amazed when we gathered all of our data that not many um, libraries are providing their Facebook link on their website. And for us, this is a huge way to get at the university audience because our website is the most visited WCU website, um, uh, pretty much of, of any website through Western because folks are accessing the databases, um, they're accessing resources through our page. So if you aren't linking your Facebook page on your website, you're really doing yourself a great disservice. Um, create uh, a see first marketing video. So folks have the option with it when they go to your Facebook page um, under followers to see your content first. So what you can do um, without engaging in um, engagement baiting, like specifically saying, you know, follow us or, or like this page, you know, to be, be entered into a contest or something. You can post a video uh, without any text and have them um, just kind of give a short, you know, 30 second tutorial on how to select that see first option under following. And um, that's a great way to get, po get posts boosted to the very top of their newsfeed. And the last resort, um, if you're not having any luck with these options or you don't have the time to do all these things, you can, can consider paying for ads or post boosts. So um, luckily, the boosts are very inexpensive. Most of them average around, around $5. And you get, reach out to thousands of people within your immediate area. You can set um, the audience that you want, depending on the different demographic items. Um, so that's a really a great way to um, to get engaged more without um, having a, a large amount of money set aside for marketing. Okay, so um, the main question that we all have, uh, I know we, even we, you know, this is all a great information, but we're asking how um, can we find time or the help um, to be able to do all this great stuff. So we have just kind of a few tips on how that you can um, find time to actually do all of this Facebook marketing. Um, we suggest setting aside one hour per week for Facebook. Um, so you can, and you can do this in smaller increments. So maybe 15 minutes at the desk when it's slower on a Friday afternoon. Um, you could um, kind of pre-schedule your posts for the next two or three weeks. And maybe the next week you would want to actually do that listening exercise that I talked about and see what others are saying about um, kind of about, about your library and about your university. Um, and you can also solicit help um, from your marketing team at, at your university or college. So um, our, our particular office, they manage the Facebook page, the General Western Facebook page, as well as um, the page for alumni, and they want to manage the page for <laughs> admissions. So they might be perfectly open to, if you don't have time to manage the page, taking that over and you can provide the content and they would um, kind of manage and host um, the information and uh, help answer any questions you know that folks have. You can also recruit um, student workers, volunteers, or interns. So if you have student workers that maybe have a background, their, their majors in marketing or in, um, possibly, you know, communications, see if they were, would be interested in doing this um, kind of on the side to gain some work experience before they graduate. Um, and if you don't have any students that would have that background, you can also um, reach out to departments on campus and see if maybe the business school has um, folks who are interested in um, doing an unpaid internship. Um, and of course, I mean, if you don't want to give free reign to these people, you can review the content, just um, kind of have them help in posting it and in gathering the information. And you can still uh, kind of uh, manage the quality of the, of the posts. 
So um, we had mentioned earlier about all of the different changes of Facebook over time. So there, it's, it's difficult sometimes to um, keep up with the changes until you actually notice it in your own newsfeed. So there are several ways that you can keep up um, with trends with, uh, on Facebook. One is to follow technology pages, and these are just a few of the ones that we suggest. Um, social media today is really great because they have a newsletter that you can subscribe to. Um, and it follows, uh, keeps up with pay, uh, information about all social media platforms, but you can pull out um, the Facebook posts and find out you know, what's going on with Facebook, tips on how to um, better engage your audience. You can also follow the, the general Facebook news pages. And this is actually how we gathered a lot of our information for the Facebook timeline that we created for this presentation. Um, so they're constantly putting out posts about um, changes in the algorithm, changes in different features on Facebook, um, and just kind of they talk in general about what some of the feedback that they're getting from users. And even if you're not paying for um, ads, you can look at the business page as well, and they have a lot of great tips on how to um, market through Facebook. Okay, so some of the key takeaways um, that we wanted to highlight for today, because I know we covered a lot of information, um, so it may have been kind of overwhelming, but um, probably the main, one of the main key takeaways is to be strategic. Um, if you are gonna use Facebook as a, um, a means of marketing for free, you have to be strategic in how you um, schedule posts consistently, how you um, reach out to your audience um, and, you, I mean, you just have to take that time um, to do these things in order to make your uh, Facebook page or optimal for marketing. The next is the, the data shows that likes don't equal engagement. And what we really want is engagement. We want to have our posts being shown to the wider community. And so you have to engage in those other things and don't take the number of likes you have as a, a, a an indication that you're doing well. Next is to consider paid ad and boost posts. Remember that a post that's doing well is one that needs to be boosted, not one that um, is not doing well. Uh, you want one that is already engaging and when you see one doing that, um, see if you can't spend some money on it or spend some quality time with your campus wide to see if you can boost that post. And last, um, Flexibility is definitely important. Um, as I said earlier, um, Facebook is constantly changing. So you need to be um, nimble and prepared to change your strategy um, whenever you're doing marketing. Um, stay up to date, um, either through you know, the Facebook newsroom or through um, social media marketing pages. Um, it's really important if you want your, um, your Facebook marketing to be successful, it's really important to stay flexible. Okay, so thank you so much for attending um, our webinar, and if you have any questions, feel free to contact us at the information below.